James and Butler throwing haymakers at each other. Butler drives, and he's fouled. And Butler right now is exhausted with 46.7 remaining. That is Jimmy Butler exhaust, and why wouldn't he be? He just dropped 35 points fighting through Anthony Davis, 12 rebounds, 11 assists, 5 steals playing 47 minutes, and will the Heat to win Game 5 in the NBA Finals? But this wouldn't be the only time. He might want to lay there for a while too because Look now him. he's exhausted. He is because now he's going to have to start forcing shots because no one else can score on their team, right? And he's the only one. And even this year in round one, oh, he's not there? <laughs> We're starting to see a Jimmy Butler problem. Something that isn't being talked about, somehow ignored for years, and I'm going to try my best to address it beyond just the obvious missing games. And it all goes back to a failed promise five years ago. What is up, deuce that spars players? It's your boy MJ. No one wants to see Jimmy Butler in the playoffs because he is the equalizer. We saw it last year, bringing only the second number eight seed to the finals and leaving a trail of teams in his wake. But that's only if he's healthy. In 2002-2003, the average All-Star played 79.2 games in a season. But that was a different time where stars also averaged 37 minutes a game. In 2023, the All-Stars only averaged 64.4 games. And now, let's look at Jimmy's number of games played. If we take a look at the number of games played by Jimmy each season, he has never made it past 65 games for the past 7 years. And all that ties to the broken promise. But to fully understand, we need to look at the playoffs. Because what I talked about is just the regular season. Right? Kind of. What? As we've seen in recent years, Jimmy can kind of coast in the regular season. The Heat were the goddamn 8 seed in 2023, and Jimmy wasn't even an all-star. But he's him in the playoffs. Jimmy. He has come alive. Jimmy Butler has done it again. They're having words. Look, Look at this. this. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Grant Williams and got all the way to the cup. Butler could be a top 3 player in the playoffs, but not even a top 15 player during the regular season. Something that I've mentioned exposes the NBA and shows how the regular season has become devalued, but bottom line, Jimmy is there when it counts. Has it right here. Until he's not. But why? Is Jimmy Butler injury prone? Yes and no. If we take a look at Jimmy Butler's injury history, it's a long list. Butler's body is banged up with some serious injuries, including several knee injuries. The one in 2018 required a meniscus surgery. And look, man don't give a f where that's calling out his own star teammates and beating them with the bench. All Jimmy wants to do is win on the big stage, sell coffee, and Rachel Nichols. Hey, yo! And during the playoffs, Jimmy doesn't really miss games. He's only missed two games in 11 playoffs. One due to knee inflammation and another last year due to an ankle sprain. But there's something we don't really talk about much that I'd want to look at. The impact of those injuries. Jimmy returns to the playoffs only missing one game after a pretty severe ankle sprain that probably needs weeks to heal. Heck, just in the playing tournament. Foul! And Jimmy Butler's grabbing his right knee. Jimmy sprained his MCL and was still out there, playing and trying to will the Heat to a win. But his game obviously suffered. He ended up shooting 5 of 18 from the field, barely touched the ball in the clutch time, and the Heat lost. But I'm not saying that's Jimmy's fault. At least in recent years, it's the Heat. And it's something we ignored for years under the guise of success. And if y'all want the unfiltered truth, no mainstream BS propaganda, subscribe for more because we are going crazy in the playoffs and the offseason. The Heat have defied odds consistently because of two things, effort and Jimmy Butler. If we take a look at Jimmy Butler's stats regular season versus playoffs, it's dramatically different. 
In fact, going off of last year, Jimmy Butler had twice as many 40 point games in the playoffs in the last two seasons than the next closest player in the NBA. The reason why that is even more insane is that Jimmy has 8 40 point games in 754 regular season games. So he almost has as many 40 point games in the playoffs as his entire regular season career. So while Jimmy is such a playoff riser, the Heat's offense in particular has certain games where it just dies. It's incapable of creating a shot. They need Butler to go crazy just to stay in games. We can look at 2021 when Jimmy didn't have a good playoffs and the Bucks destroyed the Heat in the first round. And you might say, yeah, Jimmy is their star. Of course, that makes sense. It's why Butler is playing 46 minutes in game five, because if he doesn't, it falls apart. Apart from the exception of game three against the Celtics, Jimmy is running pretty much every play. But it's unlike anything we've actually seen. Look at the roster and you might start to understand it. Let's look at all the teams that made the finals in the past five years and look at their second leading score. There's the 2023 Nuggets, Jamal Murray at 26.1, LeBron at 27.6 because 80 was even higher, CP3 at 19.2, and here's the Heat second leading scores. Drogic for the Heat in 2020 is near the bottom of this list, but 2023 BAM was the lowest in the past five years. But that's only by a little, right? Clay was close at only 19, but the third link scorer that year was Jordan Poole at 17. Damn, Poole really fell off. Get some help. So let's look at the third league scores. 2019 Warriors were so unfair, 20 point third score, but most players hovered around 16. And then here's the Heat. Caleb Morin last year at 12.7 would be the lowest by far. There is technically one player that's even lower, which is KCP on the 2019 Lakers, but that makes sense if you have two guys scoring over 27 points a game. So the Heat had the second lowest third score and the lowest second score last year. And sure, there's a lot more context, injuries, matchups, but the bottom line, the Heat don't have guys that can create their own shot, meaning everything falls on Jimmy. And because Jimmy's style is fighting to the paint in the post, methodical, using his grown man strength, doing that for 45 minutes at that high usage is literally unsustainable. And that takes its toll. Like last year, by the time we got to the NBA Finals, Jimmy looked exhausted. He just couldn't give the same effort and hustle back on defense. He couldn't fully run the offense. He didn't have his legs, and you could see it in Game 3 of the NBA Finals. Someone give this man a sense of being cause dang! It's kind of why we see LeBron now and even before finding ways to get rest on the court by resting on defense and that negatively impacts a team, which I've roasted him about. Jimmy is 34 years old with a lot of miles on his body. And while we are beginning to normalize stars playing past 35, just 10 years ago, the average age of retirement for a star player in the NBA was 34 years old. It's almost irresponsible to put the expectations on Jimmy to carry this team without help. Help offensively, that is. And the fact is, we actually haven't. We just keep forgetting. For the past three years, in every offseason, in every trade deadline, the Heat are on the verge of luring some NBA superstar. Donovan Mitchell, Bradley Beal, Damian Lillard, and countless others. But they have failed every time. And so Jimmy has been left alone. But that's not what he was promised. In 2019, when Jimmy Butler left the Sixers and left Embiid one shot away from making the Eastern Conference Finals, which he still hasn't done, Butler wanted to go to a championship contender, a winner that wanted him. And the Heat in 2019 were far from it. But what they did have was a winning culture and most importantly, Pat Riley, whose reputation speaks for itself. One of the few people capable of getting Shaq to lose weight and holding LeBron accountable. He promised Jimmy Butler that they would add another star. Or in his exact words, find the next thing. But 
they haven't. If you count Bam Adebayo, then they sort of have, but not a guy who is a consistent threat, or like most teams, a second superstar. The fact that he are always in rumors to add speaks more to their lack of talent and roster construction. Of course, we don't hear about it from Jimmy Butler, for the most part, the guys on the Heat play hard. They play to win, unlike some other players he's played with, <coughs> Ben Simmons. Huh? As much as Jimmy is him, I think he deserves to have a roster around him that is actually built for a championship. Not one that needs him to have three games of 35 point triple doubles every series just to have a chance of winning, he's getting taken for granted. Sure, we have Heat fans begging, and I mean begging Jimmy to return, but we're not on the Heat's head for not giving Jimmy the right tools. And because of it, he may go down as a dog, but not a champion. And that to me is unfair. Jimmy Butler deserves better. The only notification I shout goes to Pogito. Appreciate you. And I haven't seen a star fail like this. If you want to know who and why, there's a video right here. It's your boy MJ. Comment, hit me if you're still here. We out. And we vibe.